It has nothing to do with Zen and the theology of making motors go. It's more basic. Riding a bicycle from the east end into the heart of the downtown when there's nowhere else a person can go to get something. Which is an infelicitous and unkind way to say it. Because anybody who cares wants to go as often as reasonably possible downtown. To have their minds stimulated. To see the wonderful displays of consumer goods. And the ingenious expensive ads for consumer goods. And all the people dressed in the latest fashions working on the production and advertising and marketing of consumer goods. But on a bicycle, a person can't just ride out onto the main arteries and then be downtown, safe and sound and happy. Because the bicycle, as a real mode of transportation, is obsolete, without being antique, out of date, without being collectible. Except for fanatics who fit their little cycle-shoed feet into neat footholder cages, and dress in stretched satin that shines and shows the roll and ripple of their thigh muscles and the bulge of their genitals and their sleek, slender ankles, who pay piles of dollars for their machines and their apparel and the little first aid kits and water flasks and air pumps and custom-made seats that gently massage the roll of their thigh muscles as they pump up the Rockies or over the prairies, or around the Gaspé, or through the Kootenays, or into the ice fields, or onto the Gulf Islands, or just down the block to the bicycle specialty shop. As long as they aren't riding a bicycle to really do something, like pick up a prescription at the drugstore, or go downtown from the East End to get something you can't get anywhere else, which is to say, I suppose, there are pornographies of everything, like leather fetishism and stamp collection, and people who make shoe museums or buy guns and join target range clubs so they can lie on their bellies and fire round after round at targets they really wish were live bodies, spurting blood and shrieking as their murderers pump bullets at them feeling power like the grab and surge of a cocaine tape, heaving them up and out into ecstasy. So who would want to ride a bicycle downtown or go there at all, except when there's nowhere else a person can go to get something? Which means, in the present state of capitalist, imperialist, hegemonic strategies for early commodity obsolescence, but I have to cycle down the back alleys where there's almost no traffic except for garbage pickers and winos and native Indians and graffiti that says things like all smokers are idiots but not all idiots are smokers and yuppies out of the East End and eat shit and eat the rich and other highly political slogans In fact, the back alleys are places where bicycles probably belong, like books in second-hand stores that people never read anymore, because movies and televisions and videos and compact discs and VCRs and just walking around through the centers and showrooms and marts and malls downtown take up all their lives. But there's a certain integrity in it, too, as well as something philosophical. Peddling the old three-speed down the tunnels called alleys. The places where a busy world drags all the broken, 
and useless and outdated, flawed, decomposing, half-used and unfashionable things. To be put into huge iron containers that are picked up by trucks with arms and legs and eyes and automated lifters and carried away where no person need look upon the unrelenting facts of disintegration and death. I think deep, disturbing thoughts as I pedal over the cobblestones, down the tunnels a little at the back of life, and I feel kinship with the graffiti writers shouting their slogans at a deaf world, and the garbage pickers, unsung archaeologists of the now, and the winos, who would very likely say if anyone gave them a chance, look here. This modern civilization simply doesn't meet the reasonable criteria of sensitive, caring, and truly concerned people. And I feel kinship especially with the native Indians, wandering down the alleyways of eternity, their place in the scheme of things having nothing to do with what they really are themselves, but with the highways they are offered and the throughways and freeways and expressways, the arteries and main thoroughfares, and the chances they are offered to be feather-headed entertainment, dressed in beads and leather frills and soft moccasins and embroidered shirts and drums that throb and throb with ancient, inarticulate longing that makes them turn away from the careful, civilized contempt they receive without even thinking about it or saying a single word. To walk in the narrow valleys where there's some shelter from the wind, where the air is a little better, the noise somewhat diminished. And where two people can pass each other as if on a mountain path or a leafy trail by a river, not needing to stop or talk, or even form a greeting, but extending spirit the way it happens in real silence. Recognizing the other is here too, and going somewhere with a purpose, quietly, unpretentiously human.